100 kilometers and a 10-day journey on foot. That is what Sunny Sonam's protest march from the Rainbow Bridge in Niagara to the Chinese consulate in Toronto looked like. We all know why we're here, right? I, I finished like 170 or around 180 kilometers walking through all this uh, city hall in in Hamilton, Burlington, Mississauga, Stony Creek. The reason why I walked was for our brothers and sisters who are still struggling inside Tibet. Same thing with Hong Kong, same thing with East Turkestan, right? So we should never of course, Taiwan as well. We should never forget that our brothers and sisters are still suffering over there. Even though we, we are living in a great country like Canada. And let's talk about two Michaels. You know, even, anyway, I just, I'm not gonna waste any one time. So I'm just gonna protest for like five minutes. So let's do it, right? Free Tibet China out, free Tibet China out. Free Tibet! Free to bed! Turn out! 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 Turn out! Turn out! Turn out of the bed now! 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 Free Hong Kong! 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 Thank you. Three it's bad. Thank you. Thank you. Free to bed. Now at Burlington City. Burlington, the town of Oakville, for the train. Thank you, Pedro. Free Tibet. Bridge. Bridge. Thank you. Free Tibet. Pedro. Long live His Holiness, Fortin Dalai Lama. China out of Tibet now. Along with being the vice president of the regional Tibetan Youth Congress, Sunny is part of the Rang Zen Movement, an initiative based in the U.S. asking China to free Tibet. 
after walking through St. Catherine, Winona, Grimsby, Stony Creek, Hamilton, Burlington, Oakville, Mississauga, and Toronto, Sunny now joins us to discuss his journey and mission. Thank you for taking out the time to speak with us, Sunny. First and foremost, we're curious to hear about your 10-day protest march all the way from Niagara to Toronto and the motive behind it. So the reason uh, uh, our main motive was let the world know what is really happening inside Tibet. Inside Tibet, we still don't have a basic human right. So that's how uh, me and my friends, uh, especially Tundula Hadala from New York, uh, Wandula uh, from New York, and Tubdenla from Philadelphia, that's how we come up with this idea. And this is the second march that uh, we decided to do. As, um, as I was saying earlier, first march we did was on the um, May 3rd, sorry, March 3rd, uh, 2019. So this is the second march that we started from May 23rd, 2021, yes. And the other members of the Rang Zin movement conducted a similar 10-day march from the Independence Hall in Philadelphia to the U.S. House of Representatives in Washington, D.C. How did that group form and what are some of the successes that the group has seen since its establishment? So as I was uh, uh, like, uh, like as early as I was talking with my friends, they said that, you know, like this time uh, there was a lot of people who was giving us attention, you know, taking us the fly, like taking the flyers and, you know, like, uh, like, you know, like walking toward us, talking about us. So it, w it was it was a great um, uh, and at the same time, um, like I should be saying, really thankful to those younger kids. Uh, I think at the age of like 14 to 15, um, all those uh, boys and girls, they participated with them. So that was something really nice, you know, like we are doing this for our, uh, our future of Tibet. The younger kids should really know that still inside, our brother, uh, our brother and sister are still struggling. So, so it, it was good. It, it turned out really good. And coming back to the 10-day march you ended at the Chinese consulate here in Toronto, did you pick it or speak to someone when you got there? How did, how did that turn out towards the end of your march? So, uh, so the reason was uh, I reached in Toronto uh, on, on the, uh, yesterday, June 1st. So I started from the uh, MP office, um, but I could have gone straight to Chinese consulate, which is going to take like only one and a half hour walk. But I decided that, you know, like why I don't, walk within uh, all this Toronto downtown, young, uh, young and Dundas, City Hall, you know, like let the public know what is really happening. And then I decided to stop at five o'clock in front of Chinese consulate because uh, every Wednesday, um, the regional Tibetan Youth Congress of Toronto used to organize al hakar protest. So the reason they, they did was during that time, 4.30 to 5.30, because most of the, uh, the, the worker inside the Chinese communists office they finish their work and they come they leave their office around like 4 50 to 5 o'clock so that was that was my main target so as soon as i reach over there uh, these people were coming out you know like leaving the office so and uh, uh, as usual they will never ever come outside talk to us they will never ever do that they will always avoid us but what the best we can do is that we can just put the flyers on the wall, on the pillars, and that's all we can do. And that's that's that 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 that's uh, that what I did actually. Yeah. Do Do you think speaking to someone would have helped better? Honestly, it will a lot, but most of the time they don't. They will just ignore us. And uh, as I was saying earlier, um, the the Freedom March, uh, the first and the second that we did, it's all uh, done by initiated by. Uh, 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 it's, it's nothing to do with any non-profit organization. It's just that, okay, we have to do something. We just can't wait for any non-profit organization to organize something. So that's how um, the six uh, Tibetan uh, American, uh, American and myself as a Tibetan Canadian, that's how we started to do it. And um, right now, I'm doing a volunteer as the uh, vice president of Regional Tibetan Youth Congress. And the organization that I'm volunteering, it's fully volunteer. It's volunteering, uh, Tibetan Youth Congress, it's considered as the uh, terrorist for the Chinese communists. 
So the Chinese communists always take this non-profit organization as a terrorist. And um, yes, okay, yes, we are terrorists, but we are terrorists with the with the voice and with the pen. So we just do peace protests, but even they don't even care about, you know, like, let's talk. They will never ever do that. So we've been struggling for almost more than 62 years now. And look at His Holiness 14 Dalai Lamas. He's turning on July 6th, he's going to be like 86 years old. And at the age of 24, he had to leave his, his Potala Palace on May 17, and he had to escape to India. Yeah. So still, the whole world is ignoring. So excluding what you just talked about, are there any other challenges that you face? Or are you able to receive support from other organizations and individuals in the country that have a soft spot for Tibet? Oh yeah, and uh, when, as as I was saying earlier, when we do individual any uh, protests against the Chinese communists, uh, there's a lot of support from the organizations. Like like the the uh, I was supposed to be in states, but now due to this border close, and um, my air ticket was wasted, and at the same time I was like I already took two weeks off for of my work. Now what? I can't travel, and then I decided to walk back. So when I decided to walk back, I want to say thanks to all the nonprofit organization we have in, in, in Tibetan nonprofit organization we have in Toronto, um, our Canadian Tibetan Association, CTAO, um, the uh, President Wangela and the uh, Vice President Dojela and Tupi Lekshala and all the executive members, same as Tibetan Women Association presidents, Darila and all uh, uh, executive members, Yangila and uh, uh, Ajanyimala, and same as the uh, Dekom Chishikando, so Dekom Chishikando president as well, Wanchula. So all this, uh, even same as, sorry, uh, the organization that I'm volunteering, RTYC, um, Regional Trade Youth Congress, uh, Tara Doma and Pinzok and Tenzin Yingje, this all non-profit uh, organization was really helpful. Same as the individual person, once, uh, I think it was, sorry, it was a day that uh, I reached in Mississauga City Hall. So during that time, on Thursday, someone called me and he was like, hey, I heard you're going to reach in Mississauga City Hall. I'm going to bring you food. So, so I, got, I got a lot of good supports and I want to say thanks to him as well. His name is Tupdenla. So, yeah. And same as um, Pema Kitu. Uh, it's, um, Pema Kitu is the, uh, like, uh, the time when His Holiness Dalai Lama was here in 2010. And during that, that time, our Canadian Prime Minister was Stephen Harvard. So during that time, His Honest Dalai Lama requested to help some Tibetan. And um, 1,000 uh, Tibetan from Arunachal Pradesh um, got, uh, was welcomed in, in, in Toronto, in Canada. So in that, uh, or that Kitu, we call Tibetan called we Kitu. So that Kitu was really helpful with me as well. Uh, who like they, they, they brought me like water and yeah so thanks to them as well yeah it was it was really good support no that that sounds amazing but yeah. I noticed you only mentioned nonprofit organizations so what do you think the Canadian government should do to help people of Tibet and those oh. working towards its freedom Canadian Canadian government like I was I was a little, little bit upset I think it was on April 13 or 14. When Justin Trudeau was talking about like human rights, that they gonna he gonna talk to China about human rights, and uh, during that time I think it was COVID nineteen press going on, and I, I clearly remember that. And Justin Trudeau uh, mentioned about East Turkestan, which is great, Uyghur, which is great, and uh, Justin Trudeau he mentioned about Hong Kong, which is great, but he didn't mention anything about Tibet, and I was like, like Tibet, what? How how come you can't mention our country? We've been struggling for like 62, year, 62 years. And the Chinese communists took everything from us, you know, everything. And when you hear a story about my grandpa, my grandpa was prison for 10, 10 years. And my grandma, my, my mom and dad, they were like, they were like three years old when they had to run away. You know, I'm really fortunate that, uh, that I, was, I was born in, 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 in India and I didn't have to face any of those Chinese communist brutality. But still, uh, I feel like we should not forget how our grandparents really suffered, you know? 
and we still don't have any basic human right. The flag you seeing at, at the back, that's that's our flag. And you can't even raise our own flag. And, and no way. Once you did, you are gone. So and 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 I really I really feel like the Canadian government should you you know like stand up and, and speak to, you know, like like let let's talk about two Michaels, you know? They're not even able to do I've been following up their news all the time about two Canadians, right? You know, two, two Michaels, and even you know, like when they when they had a court trial on, I think it was on end of March, March twenty second or something. Even the Chinese communists didn't let any uh, a, a diplomatic Canadian or any like they didn't let them in inside the court. Th that those court trial was just uh, just to show up. It wasn't really a court trial for them, you know. You can't even represent yourself. You can't even speak yourself. So what kind of court trial is that? And I hope Canadian government will really focus and, and, and do something for, for our people inside Tibet, you know. And, and 167 Tibetans self-immolated since 1998 till 2019. And when I'm saying 167, the young age is 16 years old. Oh. And that's not a joke. That's that's not a joke, honestly, you know. And and like, I'm I'm, yeah. Sorry, I'm just being weird. No, no, I just I <laughs> no, I I hear you. But I got so. What are you, what steps are you taking to create awareness, or what steps would you recommend other people take to create awareness about the issues going on in Tibet right now? Like, um, what I want from people was like. The time when I was when I was like walking uh, from the uh, Canadian border, Rainbow Bridge, my main idea was I'm not gonna go straight to Chinese consulate. So if you go straight to Chinese consulate, it is a short route. But at the same time, you're not meeting so many people. Sorry, you're just going around to this lake shore, you know, enjoying the view. That's I don't want. So that's how I started to pick up the main city hall, like Stony Creek. Hamilton City Hall, Burlington City Hall, St. Catherine City Hall, you know? So that's how I was walking around going inside the city. That's how I met so many cool people. They were stopping their car and they were giving me uh, donations. They were giving me uh, gift cards, Tim Martin gift cards. And, and people were like stopping their car and some people were taking U-turn, asking questions. And I told them, thanks a lot for stopping by. I don't need your donation. But what I want from you is, please, spread our story. Spread our Tibetan brother and sister stories, East Turkestan, Hong Kong stories, to your friends and family who doesn't know. That's all I want. So this is, you know, like, I feel like spreading the truth can be good, you know. So that's, 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 what, that's all I want, yes. Yeah. Well, it sounds like it's been a long and tiring 10 days for you, and I really, we really hope you get some rest now. So thank you for joining us and sharing your journey with us. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And thank you to our viewers for watching my discussion with Sunny Sona. Do visit rangzinmovement.com to learn more about his mission. You're watching International News Channel. I am Simone Ivani.